Hello, hello, hello everybody and welcome along to round 13 of the Apex Online Racing Hype Energy F3 League. After a rain-affected race last time I was in Hungary, we've travelled northwest to Belgium and the Ardennes Forest, where, we'll be, where we will be racing around circuit Spa-Francorchamps today. Rain is always a threat here, so we might well see a repeat of the weather from last time out, which I'm sure some drivers will be secretly hoping for. Kruzix in particular thrived in the wet conditions last time out to take the race victory in his Williams. Can he back up his credentials again today? My name as ever is Jacob Hancox and I will be your commentator, sole commentator today I'm afraid, for the AOR Hype Energy F3 race here in Belgium. So I think the drivers are already into the uh, session, the qualifying session, so let's just get on over there for you guys. One second, I'll just turn up the sound so you can hear the cars nice and well. Alright, here we go then into the qualifying session and having said that this race is often rain affected at the moment it looks like it's pretty much bone dry so as you can see a full grid of drivers today something that as a commentator i always love to see and i'm pretty sure everyone always loves to see to start with in this qualifying session i expect we're just going to see the drivers running around oh, i was about to say we're going to see the drivers running around on the hard tires but they're actually going to run around on the soft tires on the opening part of this qualifying session, this uh, tells me one of two things. Either they do not plan on finishing the qualifying session with a uh, soft lap as their fastest lap and they plan on starting instead on the medium tyres. That's what I expect. The alternative is that they believe that they there will be rain before the end of this session, though looking at the state of the blue skies right now, I highly doubt that. So, looks like most of the drivers will not be preferring the soft tyre as a tyre to set their ultimate lap time on. They're just using it as a practice tyre here in the opening stages of the session. Ripson, once again, retiring from qualifying, so he will not be qualifying in his McLaren, but the other 19 drivers will be out here circulating, trying to set a lap time, the best lap time they possibly can. Kruzix in the Williams, as I mentioned, our race winner last time out. That elevated him. That, that was his first points of the season in only his second race of the season. He won it. And that elevated him to fourth place in the championship, just behind Waza, who's currently sitting in third. He also came third last time out in the Hungarian Grand Prix as well. So, coming third, moved him up into third in the championship. Volash Kevin still leading the way, 68 points in the championship at the moment. For those who don't know, the uh, F3 championship got effectively reset halfway through the season. A couple of the drivers have been here since the start of the season, but very few of them have. So we've pretty much started the uh, season again from Germany, more or less. Not literally, but almost literally. And as a result of that, our championship leader is Bolash Kevin with 68 points. But he has won two of the three races he's participated in so far and comes second in the other one, his home race last time out in Hungary. So he is in very strong form indeed at the moment and looks like it's going to be very hard to beat him throughout the rest of the season even though he only has 68 points to his name so far. Andonator still sitting in second. He's been here for the whole season, though, in the Williams, the German driver with 54 points after coming seventh last time out at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Come on board with Kruzix now. Just take you on a bit of a tour around Circuit Spa-Francorchamps. As we head down the hill now, famous, the most famous part of pretty much any Grand Prix track here, Eau Rouge and Radion, as he heads up through Radion. Very neat and tidy through there, not... Uh, troubling the curbs too much or uh, thinking about cutting any of those corners. So good driving from him. Up through the kennel straight now and down towards Le Com. This right, left and then right hander once again here. That is Le Com for you. Nice little section. Really feels great when you get that little section right. Flows really nicely. Here's Bruxelles which is a corner that never feels good no matter how well you take it. A massive lock up on the inside right for Kruzix. Uh, or inside front, I should say, for Kruzix. That is exactly what you should be expecting most of the drivers to do into there because breaking into that corner is as tricky as it gets. Here through Puon, you have to be uber committed through this left-hander. Double left-hander there. And it's almost flat out, but not quite. And you just have to... It's a real test of bravery, that particular corner. And then turns 13 and 14 as we head now down towards this right-hander, which is Stavolo. Pretty essential to get this one right as you are pretty much on the throttle from here for a long way through Kerpel Frey. You can take it flat now and up down towards, uh, up down, up towards Blanchimont here, which is not this uh, gentle left-hander, but this sharper left-hander coming up here. Blanchimont also flat out now in a modern 2019 F1 car and now breaking hard again for the bus stop chicane. 
over the curbing. You want to ride the curbing a fair amount here. You want to get the car straightened up as quickly as possible out of the final corner and up towards the line. And it's a 143.2 from Kruzix, which does put him at the top of the field at the moment, though I'm sure some of these drivers are running rather more fuel than others. So we'll have to wait and see how long that stays there for. But a good lap, nevertheless, from Kruzix. It all seemed very neat and tidy and in control from the Williams driver. Just uh, so you guys are aware, I do have chat open on my laptop next to me, so I will be able to respond to anything you guys have to ask in chat or any uh, comments you have to make. So if you want to say anything in chat, feel free to do so. Uh, of course, no pressure to just uh, put messages for the sake of it, but if you have anything to say, I will be able to respond. Greju, he's been having a lot of trouble in qualifying recently. He has the pole in the Toro Rosso. Ironically, he's been very far away from pole. Uh, he has uh, struggled to set lap times without invalidating them. Is something I've noticed from Greju and really bad lock up in to the bus stop chicane there, but he seems like he's heading into the pits anyway. And in fact, the fact that he has not set a lap time so far either indicates that he did not want to cross the line on those soft tyres or that, in fact, no, it's only done zero laps, so I don't think he actually has invalidated his lap time anywhere around here. A little bit of a freeze there. I hope my computer's going to be okay. It's running a little bit slow at the moment for some reason. He did invalidate his lap time, so that's exactly proving what I was saying about Greju, that he does have a tendency at the moment to invalidate those lap times, and that's something, a habit, he's going to have to try and get himself out of. Here's Nutz to Nutz. He appears to have taken some front wing damage at some point because he... Uh, I'm not seeing quite as many front wing elements there as I should be, unless I'm very much mistaken. I may well be mistaken. Slightly hard to tell with the Ferrari how much of the front wing is or isn't there. And judging by the way he's driving, I think uh, I think it's more or less okay, actually. So he's probably all right. Let's see if we can get an off-board view of his front end on that car. Yep, that all seems fine to me. Yep, no problems there on the Ferrari, so I was just imagining things there. But as he comes around, he has not yet set a lap time on this soft tyre. Most of the drivers have now set a lap time on the soft tyre, but I suspect they will be coming into the pits to get rid of those as quick as they possibly can. Of course, one thing that we might be seeing is it might be that the race itself is going to be wet rather than the qualifying session. Nuts to Nuts would have set a 143.8 there, which would have put him up into fifth position, but he invalidated his lap time, just like we saw from Greju as well. So, no lap time on the board at the moment for the Austrian in the Ferrari. Sissant now, up through Radion. He's got a bit of dirty air through here, which doesn't help that much, but now is where you get the payback, and it is his teammate Iceman up ahead. So this might be a rehearsed move from the Alfa Romeo Salva boys, as he gets a massive slipstream up the Kemmel straight, and there goes Iceman straight on at the end. So that is indeed a rehearsed move from the Alfa Romeo cars. That's nice to see these uh, teammates working well together here. And Sissant now down into Bruxelles. How will he do through here? No lock-up on the inside front tyre, so that's always good news. If you manage not to lock up into Bruxelles, that's pretty much uh, all you can really ask from that corner. Wide through no name, though. The left-hander straight after it, so that won't have gained Sissant any time. Oh, and he's almost run wide through Puan, but not quite. Looked like it was okay through Puan. A little bit pedestrian, perhaps. But still kept all four wheels on the road, which is the important thing. Turn 13. Into the left hand to turn 14. Bolash Kevin now going top of the timing sheets. No surprise there. In the racing point with a 142.9. The first of the drivers to dip into the 142s. Is on those soft tyres still though. With only uh, nine minutes left in the qualifying session. I'm starting to think maybe some of these drivers are going to set a lap time on the soft tyres indeed. Because they are all coming back to outlaps on their soft tyres. So it does seem like the soft tyres are the tyres to go for and uh, they just decided to go out particularly early in the session for it. Maybe because it's such a long lap around here, you have to go out earlier if you want to get all of your lap times in, and so you can't afford the luxury of a little practice session like the drivers usually take. Sissant across the line with a 143.7. That's a pretty good lap time from the Alfa Romeo driver, but with track improvement, I expect to see him dropping significantly down the order once these guys on their outlaps have completed their laps. It's going to be on board with Hooper now. Looks like he's started his second flying lap of the session, currently sitting in seventh position in the McLaren, and he's sitting in ninth position in the championship at the moment after finishing ninth last time out at the Hungarian Grand Prix. Through Brussel, ever everlasting right-hander, really frustrating corner, I must say. Into No Name, that's much better. On the curbing is where you want to be on the inside through No Name. Uh, gets it hooked through nicely there, no problems for him. Into Puon, Pri ooh, bit wobbly there. That was a bit of a nervy moment, I think, for Hooper as he almost tried to just put the throttle down when he couldn't do it and almost just ran too fast into the corner but he got it sorted out pretty nicely in the end very nicely through turns 13 and 14 there i like the look of that 
into Stavolo now. How will he do? Perfect amount of curve taken. He gets on the throttle nice and early. Curve pull, pull threat. Curve pull frere, bit of a tongue twister, should be no trouble for him, and indeed it was not. Up towards Blanchimont, he will go now. Again, that's no trouble. It's a corner you can't just not think about. You do have to slightly think about the line you take through the corner, so as not to scrub off too much speed, but it is flat out, so it's not that much of a consideration. Breaking hard into the bus stop chicane. Look at all the curb he's taking on the first part of the chicane. Less curb on the second part, because you want to get the car straightened up and settled as quick as you possibly can. Sprint to the line, and it's up to third for Hooper, with a 143.3 just behind Cruzic. I think he'll be pretty happy with that lap time so far, and he'll probably have enough time to set, strap on one more set of soft tyres before the end of the session. Let's take a look. Who are we going to take a look at now? Let's take a look at Shad, who had a bit of a disappointing race last time out after an incident on the very first lap of the Hungarian Grand Prix. He was never able to get back into the race and ended up finishing in 15th position, did the Frenchman in the racing point. Currently into the final sector of the lap he has gone and he's already two tenths of a second up on his previous lap time. That puts him in contention to take away Hooper as Hooper's third position and maybe even Kruzik's second position. He's really in the mix with those drivers at the moment based on his first two sectors. Up towards the last breaking point and pretty much the last part of the track. You have to get absolutely right here. Slowed down nicely. A lot of curb once again. Avoids the curb entirely on the left-hander through the chicane there and up towards the line. Where will it be? It's second. It's a racing point one, two at the moment. And he just squeaks ahead of Cruzix by nine thousandths of a second. Biko way off track in the house there. Not quite sure what's going on. He'll have to try and find a way back onto the track without disrupting any of the other drivers. Let's see what Cruzix is up to now. He set a very good lap time. First time out. Where will he be after his second flying lap of the session? Going a very faint slipstream up from the car up ahead. I think that might be a Haas. That might be Shellek up ahead of him on an outlap. So as long as Shellek doesn't go too slowly through these final two corners, it should be okay. It was indeed Shellek. I'm pretty happy with my eyesight on that one. Kruzix getting it slowed down nicely. Bit of a lock up. And did Shellek actually dive into the pits there after only doing an outlap? Interesting stuff from the Haas driver. Out of ERS deployment. But it doesn't matter for Kruzix because he gets a 143 flat. Great lap time from the Williams driver to reclaim his second position. He was knocked down to third by Shad, but it wasn't for long. Waza now into the final part of the lap for him as well and it looks like he is actually just setting up a lap once again he must have aborted this lap pretty early if he wants to go for a second lap on these soft tyres and here we go with Waza just, just going to stick on board with the Mercedes driver for now on a flying lap currently sitting in sixth position which is pretty good for him third position in the championship as I've already mentioned is the Czech driver up through a rouge now Blanchimon as he rises up the hill almost lost control of the car through the right hander there but not in the end as he was able to hold on to it even though there was an ever so slight little drift there bit of an airy moment as he got up through Blanchimon down the camel straight breaking really late for Lecom beautiful stuff look at that really nice oh no a bit of a kick though he took too much curbing on the inside of the second part of Lecom there on the left hander and that almost unsettled the car too much but he held on to it well very deep into Brussel that is not what you want to see at all and Waza will not be happy with this lap either but he's running out of time really he's probably just going to try and head back to the pits now I don't think that's a lap time if he's back backed out of it in fact here comes Bolash Kevin though Currently sitting on pole and even after a second rotation of flying laps from all of the rest of the field, now pretty much all of the rest of the field, Bolash Kevin is still on the pedestal on top at the moment. Therulecom taking a lot of curve in the left-hander there. I'd be surprised if that didn't invalidate the lap, but we'll have to see. He's still pushing, still in three ERS mode, so I can only assume that he didn't invalidate that lap. Down through Brussel now, running a little bit wider, not taking it quite as tightly as we've seen some of the other drivers, but that seems to be suiting him well. A lot of curve on the entry just before actually turning in for no name there, but it seems to have suited him fairly well. Up through Puon now, not taking the curve on the inside, that can unsettle the car, and actually not taking any of the curves through Puon, interesting strategy. Didn't look like it was quite as fast as it could have been, but maybe uh, that's just when you want to keep the stability of the car there instead of the outright pace that actually pays dividends for you in the long run, of course. Far, far be it from me to criticize Bolash Kevin, I'm sure he knows exactly what he's doing, as he has shown time and time again so far this season in the AOR Hype Energy F3 League. Now, up towards Blanchemont, big flat-out section. Not really much for him to think about at the moment. Easy left-hander through Blanchemont now. Turns in nicely, no problem there. Doesn't want to get too much steering angle, and he didn't. Breaking where will it be? Just about after the 100-meter board. Very uh, revving it out in the gear, and actually, no, he's just diving into the pit, so maybe he did invalidate that lap time after all, or maybe he simply wasn't going faster. I'll just take a quick look, see if he did invalidate that lap time. He did! 
So, I was correct in thinking he invalidated that lap time and he was just pushing so he could get back into the pits as quickly as he possibly could. Now, here is Shad. He's on an out lap though. Is anyone on a flying lap? Sissons might be on a flying lap right now. He is in the Alfa Romeo. The fact that all the drivers are willing to start on the soft tyres surprises me a little bit. I don't think the soft tyres tend to last very long around here once you get into the race itself. So maybe we will be seeing a rain, uh, rainy start for the race and that's what all the drivers are banking on. Uh, is getting a little bit cloudier on the sky here in the qualifying session as well. Sissons through Curve Call Frere. Nice and tidy in the Alfa Romeo. I haven't checked his split time, so I don't know whether he's improving on his previous lap time or not, but he's still pushing. But of course, he would still be pushing as he wants to get back into the pits. But this is going to be his last attempt now. Even if he does get back into the pits, he will not be able to get back out again in time to set another lap time. Oh no, he's lost it. Almost lost it through the final corner there, or the second to final corner, I should say, up towards the line. Has he recovered it well enough? No, he has not. He's just down on his previous lap time, and that's a real disappointment for the Alfa Romeo. I'm sure he threw away a lot of time in the final chicane there and he will be kicking himself for that one here comes hooper looks like he's had a bit of a slipstream up the kennel straight and he's still getting a slipstream as he heads down towards lecom now is that it's schultes up ahead in the red bull schultes interesting he has not set a lap time so far he's tended to be one of the stronger drivers so far and he's backed out of it there he's gonna have to really get around quickly if he wants to set a lap time here lots of drivers still on their outlap with only one minute left to go in the session they'll really have to speed up if they're wanting to get to the end of their lap in time to start a flying lap and look how much the sky has changed at the start of this qualifying session it's really been quite dramatic I'm expecting to see some rain then at the start of the race session itself hooper down in fifth position at the moment that would be a pretty good qualifying performance for the mclaren driver i'm sure he would be happy with that after coming ninth at the last two races in a row so fifth on the grid would be a good way to start improving on that, although two point scoring posi uh, positions in a row is nothing to sniff at. A little bit of a kick of oversteer there on the exit of Stavolo, but I think he's held it pretty well. It will compromise him a little bit now, all the way down through this flat out section until he gets to the bus stop chicane, but I don't think it will have cost him too much time, if any at all. Up now towards getting a little bit, tiny bit of a slipstream there from Greju. Here we go, braking hard, very neat and tidy. A lot of curbing once again on the right-hand side there. Not sure he's out of the ERS deployment already as he's dragging up towards line. That will hold him back a little bit. It does improve, but only enough to jump ahead of Shad very briefly in the racing point. Shad is up on his time through sector two at the moment, or through sector one at the moment, but only just about a tenth of a second. No time remaining, and some of these drivers, Beaker has not managed to get around to start his flying lap, nor has Waza, although we actually we saw him setting two flying laps on the previous set of soft tyres. Bolash Kevin will not be setting another lap time either, so he's not going to go any better than a 142.9. And there's the rain. Look, you can see it on the camera lens. Is this going to be affecting the lap time? Can any of the drivers improve? Camille, come on! Up to second position in the Red Bull. That's more like it from the Polish driver. That's where we expect to see him. Here comes Shad through the final corner. Can he knock his teammate off of pole position? He's looked good in the qualifying session so far, but has the rain scuppered it? He moves ahead of Hooper, but only just... And it's only enough to put him up into fourth position. And Anator now. Will he be scuppered by the rain as he comes around here? In the Williams. A good qualifying performance so far for him. For both of the Williams boys actually. Kruzix in third. Has retired from the session. What will Andonator be able to do? Right hander. Left hander. It's really raining quite hard here now. So I'd be surprised if he's able to improve on his lap time up towards the line. He goes and he does improve. Enough to once again demote Hooper by one more position. But only just. And now surely we're not going to see any more improvements from the rest of the drivers. Blue 24, backed out of it, Jezza. He's still pushing, although he runs wide there, so that's uh, interesting. I think the rain is really getting to these guys now. I don't think they're going to be able to improve on their lap time, and that's... Oh, wow, JSR, what a hold that was. After taking the curve through Bonchemont in the wet conditions, that will throw the car all over the place, but he held it well. Didn't end up in the wall on the right-hand side there. Uh, meanwhile, looking down towards the bottom of the order, Schultes has not been able to set a decent lap time at all. Uh, two minute one and look it's just too wet now for the Red Bull driver so the fact that he didn't manage to set a lap time earlier in the session same story for Greju who once again starts down in 17th position here not a good qualifying session once again for the Toro Rosso driver Shellick he'll be disappointed with 16th as well and some of these drivers who waited too long who invalidated their laps earlier in the session or just waited too long to come out have been punished by the rain Meanwhile, though, unsurprisingly, it is Bolash Kevin, the Hungarian in the racing point, who takes pole position here at round 13 of the AOR Hype Energy F3 League in Belgium for the Belgian Grand Prix. Camille, come on. Ever Bolash Kevin's main rival is in second position in the Red Bull 
unsurprising to see that as well. Kruzix following up on his win last time out with a solid qualifying position, putting himself up in third in the Williams. Shad in fourth. Good response after a disappointing race last time out for the Frenchman. Andonator fifth. Hooper sixth. He'll be pretty happy with that. Waza down in seventh, even though he's third in the championship. Probably a little bit of a disappointment for the Mercedes driver. Richie V eighth. Race Monster ninth. And Sissant rounds out the top ten. He was saved a little bit by the rain coming, I think, after he botched his final flying lap. So he will start in the top ten. Although, uh, and I don't think it's going to matter if you start in the top 10 or not regarding tyres, because I think, I'm pretty sure, we're going to see a wet start to this race. There it is. Wow. <laughs> you know what? It's, talk about a wet start to the race. This is a sodden start to the race. Look at the rain here in Belgium. And there is going to be chaos through Rouge and Radion. I know it. There, there just has to be here. So many cars trying to get through such a fast corner in such wet conditions is going to be either excellent or terrible to watch. I'll let you make up your minds on that one. Um, going into last source as well is going to be tricky. It's, it's a tough braking zone at the best of times in the opening lap, trying not to run into the back of the cars around you. But in the wet conditions, that's going to be even more tricky. Session will start in one second here. They will have a formation lap, of course. So they'll be able to get a feel for the conditions as they drive around on what I assume will be full wet tyres here. Now, let's take a look. Detailed tyres. Soft? Uh, that... Is that correct? Something tells me that's probably not correct. Are the drivers having to start on the soft tyres? Or is this a visual glitch on my end and they're actually starting on the wet tyres. I know there have been problems in the past with drivers being forced to start on dry tyres in wet conditions, but usually that's when the conditions are marginal between, between dry and wet, rather than just flat out wet like this, because this is extraordinarily wet. Look at them weaving around. They probably wouldn't be doing that if they're on the soft tyres, but you never know. Blash Kevin. A lot of car control there. They're driving around as if it's not wet. Hold on. I'm going to quickly check with the drivers, because the way he was veering around there made it look like it, he wasn't actually in wet conditions after all. So perhaps... No, no, no. Surely surely it will be wet. Surely this is a wet race. It's not just on my end that it's wet, I don't think. We'll have to wait and see. Yeah, drifting wide like that through Bruxelles. That, that makes me think he, it's wet and he's on wet tyres. Bolash Kevin's lost it on the lap. Okay, so maybe his veering around was just a bit of overconfidence then. So that was... Uh, a bit of a moment, as I thought maybe the game was showing me wet conditions when it was showing dry conditions for the rest of the drivers, but I do believe they are actually wet. And look how wet. This is about as wet as it can get in the F1 2019 game, I believe. This would almost be red flagged if this was a real-life race. I think, in fact, this would at least be starting behind the safety car if this was a real-life race. That will not happen, of course, in this game, though. But Bolash Kevin has been the first one to feel the brunt of the conditions as he has spun it on his uh, formation lap here. So Camille, come on, will lead them around for the rest of the formation lap in the Red Bull, as long as he doesn't lose it himself. Just looking down the rest of the grid, it's Blue24 on Jezza, the two Renaults starting just outside of the top 10. We'll see how their progress goes throughout the rest of the race. JSR 13th in the Mercedes, he'll probably be a little bit disappointed with that. Iceman down, Iceman, I should say, not Iceman, it's not a surname, down in 14th position. Nuts to Nuts, the Austrian in 15th after we saw him invalidating a lap early on in the session. In the qualifying, I mean. Schultes down in 18th is a real disappointment for the Red Bull driver. But as we saw his issues he was having in the qualifying session, not able to set a clean lap before the rain came out. And then once the rain came out, simply unable to improve. None of the drivers were really able to improve. I don't believe this is actually soft tyres. I believe that all the drivers are actually on wet tyres, but it is possible that the game has decreed that they will start on soft tyres, but looking as they went around that formation lap, I think they are probably on wet tyres, and that is just a visual glitch on my end. So apologies for that one. Nothing I can do about that, though. So we'll just have to uh, bear with it. Bear with the problems here. So let's try and get a good camera angle for the start. Here we go, then. Three light. In fact, five lights are already on. Jump starts for several of the drivers here. They've got a, there was a long hold on the lights, and I think I see or saw at least two drivers getting jump starts. But it looks like Bolash Kevin off the line has managed to get a good enough start. He goes very defensive into La Source though. But it looks like all oh, the drivers have got hit there through there pretty cleanly. No contact from the majority of the drivers. Let's jump on board with Cruzix as he follows Camille and Bolash Kevin 
through Eau Rouge and up Radion. Kevin running very wide and Camille's got the opportunity to drive straight past him. Looks like he's going to be able to drive clean through and into the race lead here. What's it going to be? Is it going to be Kevin drifting or uh, drafting him back down towards Lecom though? The braking zone. This is going to be so tricky in these conditions. And actually, they're breaking really late here, so I'm thinking maybe this isn't the wet conditions after all. I'm still not sure about this one. But Camille Common has the lead at the moment. The way these guys are driving makes me think this is dry conditions, and the game is showing me a full wet race. So I'm really sorry about that one. I think the soft tyres are real after all, and it will probably start raining for the rest of the drivers sooner rather than later. Although, a bit of a kick of oversteer there. Maybe it is. Ooh, I don't know. We'll see once they've set their opening lap times of the race. Jezza's had a poor start. Same with Iceman. They've jumped drop down many many positions race monster is dropping positions as well in the ferrari and he's in the wall is that the exit of no name i think it is turn 11 the corner with no name has full uh, race monster has fallen prey to it after starting in the top 10 it was a promising start for the ferrari driver but he has binned it into the wall a disappointing start to the race of race monster but the fact that it's going to be wet here at spa francorchamps which is a hard track at the best of times may mean that he wants to persevere and hope that enough drivers fall off the road in front of him that he will be able to regain his position. So now, as they head up towards Blanchimont here, Camille, come on, really far in the lead at the moment. Looks really good for the Red Bull driver so far. Kruzik's close to the back of Bolash Kevin, though not close enough to think about making a move. As actually they pull up a little bit closer to the Red Bull driver through the bus stop chicane. Looks like some drivers going side by side in the background there. A couple of drivers already into the pits. What will this be for? Have they got front wing damage? No, it doesn't look like it. No front wing damage for these guys. So what are they doing in the pits here? Camille come on with the two minutes five. That is a slow lap time. So I think the conditions are indeed genuinely wet here. What are these gonna, drivers going to do in the pits? I'm going to stick on board with them or keep watching them, seeing what they are going to do here. Why they've come into... Uh, oh, no, no, that's all the drivers who got the drive throughs Of course. Sorry, my mistake. So the drivers that got drive throughs for full starting on the opening lap are Hooper, Waza, and Shad. That's tragic news for them after they all had such promising starts to the race. And now they've come out in traffic with Schultes, who's had a poor opening lap. These guys have come through the pits and have still been able to come out around and about where Schultes is. Meanwhile, back up towards the front. Sissant and Richie B side by side, and no, Sissant understeers wide into Richie B. The Toro Rosso had no more space to give to the Alfa Romeo driver, and the contact results in Sissant going round. That is the second time in two races that Sissant has been facing backwards and on the grass. Last time, it ended up in a DNF for the Alfa Romeo driver. This time, he's only gone back down into 13th position. Major lockup for him into Bruxelles as well, so this is not a good lap so far for the Alfa Romeo driver. But he can still recover it towards the end of the race. Nutster Nutster's had a great start. He's up into 8th position. Ripson and Beaker have both had great starts as well as Ripson sends it up the inside of Puon on Schellick there, getting past the Haas. What a move that is in the wet conditions. Down now towards the other Haas driver up ahead of him. Uh, both of these guys up 10 positions from where they started so far. And Ripson will have Beaker in his sights and will want to get past the second half sooner rather than later. And they're really struggling out there at the moment, which makes me think maybe... Ooh, I don't know. Maybe they are on dry turf. This is very confusing, I've got to say. This is uh, throwing me for a loop, this dry or wet tyre situation. But the conditions are so wet that they cannot be on dry tyres if they're seeing what I'm seeing at the very least. But they really are struggling at the moment. If they're staying out, yep, they are staying out. So they must all be on full wet tyres. I'm sure of it now. So they come across the line. It's a two minute one from Camille Common, which is about 15 seconds away from the sort of lap times you'd be expecting to see on dry tyres. I suppose they could be on intermediate tyres, but given the amount of rain here, look at the amount of rain, look at the amount of spray and just the rainfall itself, I'd be very surprised if this is intermediate tyre conditions. Bolash Kevin still sticking relatively close to the back of his main championship, or not main championship rival at the moment. Camille only eighth in the championship after a DNF last time out. But in most of the races, it's been Camille and Bolash Kevin who have had the majority of the pace out here. Kruzix is showing that he has a bit of a gauntlet to throw down in that regard, though a point to prove. And he is sticking with the front two pretty nicely at the moment in his Williams. And an in fourth, not far behind either, but he is drifting a little bit further away from his teammate than the gaps between the front three cars are. Good start for Richie B up three positions from where he started up into fifth. He's currently sitting in 10th in the championship after managing a sixth place last time out after staying out on one set of intermediate tyres when most drivers elected to two stop once it got to the wet conditions or to three stop the whole race. Uh, oh no, one, no two, one stop 
Oh, on intermediates and two stop the whole race. Richie B went for a one stop and it paid off for him in the end, but only just. But he was able to make it last on those intermediate tyres last time out, so he has some experience nursing tyres in wet conditions. Nuts to nuts. Currently ahead of Beaker. And there's a bit of a train forming behind the Ferrari driver at the moment. Beaker close behind him. Shellick not far behind Ripson as well, who is just outside of a second behind the lead Haas at the moment. Greju's had a good start in the Toro Rosso. Not quite as good as uh, Ripson and Beaker and Nuts to Nuts to have all gained many positions from where they started. But up five positions are Shellick and Greju. That has been helped, of course, by some drivers like Race Monster having incidents, whereas others have had to come through the pits for a drive through penalty for their jump starts. JSR now closing down on Richie B at the moment. He's had a very good start as well, also up seven positions. Richie B, 10 second time penalty for exceeding track limits. I was on board with JSR watching Richie B and I hardly saw that, so that's a really harsh penalty indeed. Wow, JSR really lighting up the rear tyres there as he heads down towards the first corner. Almost lost control of the car entirely, but didn't quite take it very tight through La Source. I'm not sure that's going to be the fastest way around here, particularly when the traction zone is going to be so critical in the wet conditions. Ripson has sent it up the inside into La Source on Beaker. They're going to be fighting it back now between these two drivers. Let's jump on board with Shellick. He'll have the pound seat here to watch this race, and it's Beaker that takes it. Ripson just has to tuck in behind, not willing to send it up the inside of Rouge in the wet conditions, and I think that's a very wise decision indeed. That can almost, there's almost no way that doesn't end in tears if you try and do that. Jezza and Waza battling at the back. Nope, Waza's just come into the pits in the Mercedes. Is that a drive-through penalty once again for him? I'm not sure. He's That's showing him on wet tyres now, so he must have changed his tyres. So maybe... Yeah, a couple of the drivers have come in and strapped on wet tyres. Jezza, Race Monster, and Waza. I suspect this race started on intermediate tyres. The drivers it's showing as being on soft tyres uh, have in fact got intermediate tyres on their cars and these guys have decided that the conditions are actually wet enough for the full wet and that's why they have come into the pits to change their tyres. That's my theory, it might be wrong, but you never know. So, back up towards the front. Camille come on still with about a one second buffer to Bolash Kevin. It's been that way for quite a while. And this is something we've seen quite a lot in the last couple of F1 games. It's really tough to catch up to the back of a car when you're not in dry conditions. The DRS helps so much. And in the wet conditions, the dirty air effect just seems to be amplified. And it's really hard to follow close behind each other, but not for Beaker at the moment. All over the back of the Austrian in the Ferrari. Nuts to nuts in eighth position. Trying to cling on with Beaker close behind him and Ripson close behind Beaker as well. This could almost be a three wide moment if this straight was just a little bit longer on the flat out section as they actually have to lift through Blanchiment. Nuts to nuts thinking about going defensive into the bus stop chicane but basically retakes the racing line before taking the right hander there. Still taking the curbing are these drivers despite the wet conditions it doesn't seem to be harming them too much. Really revving out the gears here in the wet conditions. Beaker so close behind Nuts to Nuts at the moment. Will he think about making a move soon enough? Here are the lap times at the moment. Just to show you the fastest lap that Jezza has been able to do on those wet tyres is only a two minute three at the moment. Let's just take a look at the race direct, see what the race leaders are setting at the moment. Two minute ones for Camille, similar story for Bolash Kevin. Yeah, it looks like the, hold on, did the race director just give me the real tyres? It did give me their real tyres. They are indeed on the wet tyres after all. So, these guys have started the race on the wet tyres, I think. Assistant picks up a three second time penalty in the Alfa Romeo, currently sitting down in 12th position. But yeah, sorry, this is a rather confusing situation in this race, but I do believe all of the drivers are now on wet tyres. Maybe Jezza, Waza, and Race Monster started this race on intermediate tyres. Maybe Race Monster didn't, but he had to come into the pits anyway because of his damage. So maybe Jezza and Waza either both picked up damage, had to come into the pits and just strapped on a new set of wet tyres, or they elected to start this race on intermediate tyres and hope that it dried up quick enough. Race Monster with a 10 second time penalty for exceeding track limits. That's probably in the final chicane. That's what we saw happen to Richie B earlier. I wouldn't be surprised if these drivers are appealing those sessions, but Race Monster decides that's enough for him. He retires from the session. He was running at the very back. Greju's way off track here and trying to plant the throttle where he probably couldn't do it. Almost lost it there, but he's lost a couple of positions at the very least. Nuts to Nuts has been shuffled down the order here. Beaker and Ripson have both got past him, and Ripson has also got past Beaker. So, big move there for the McLaren driver as he takes two positions very quickly, and we have a virtual safety car here. That's probably the Race Monster's retired car there in the Ferrari. I wonder if he elected to bin it into the wall rather than taking it into the pits. Will these guys head into the pits? No, nope, doesn't look like it. It's going to stick out there 
on their wet tyres at the moment. So now, this virtual safety car, how long will it last? Will any of the drivers elect to run into the pits? It's only lap six in this race at the moment, so they don't have to worry about... This wouldn't really be the sort of time where you'd be thinking about coming into the pits anyway, so they probably don't want, in, want to come into the pits this early in the race. Looks like Race Monster might have binned it. There's yellow flag... Oh no, there's going to be yellow flags around the whole track because of the virtual safety car, which has come to an end now. And it looks like Camille Common's actually got a better run than Bolash Kevin on the exit of that. Kruzik seems to have got, uh, stolen a march here on Bolash Kevin as well. Bolash Kevin, a little bit tardy away from the end of that virtual safety car, caught out by the timing of it. And Kruzik and Andonata have been able to close up to the back of the racing point in there Williams is and Shellix retired from the session in the house he was running well after such a promising start looks like he's lost it through Radion somewhere couldn't see the wreckage of his car but saw a little bit of carbon fiber on the right hand side and the Haas has crashed and Shellix is out of this race the Turk with a disappointing end after a good start to the race qualifying wasn't so great for him but on the opening couple of laps he was making moves so it's a shame to see him out of this race Kruzix close behind that. Actually, Bolash Kevin isn't really gapping the Williams driver behind him at all at the moment. Bolash Kevin seemed to struggle a little bit more than some of the other drivers up at the front in these wet conditions. He's not closing down Camille either, but the lap times are staying pretty similar between the front three, front four drivers here. And Andonator has really kept himself in touch well with the front runners, showing that he is also one of the front runners. JSR has not been able to do that meanwhile. So he has got past Richie D, who's down in 6th. Blue 24 up into 7th, by the way. That's pretty good news for him. I'm going to take it off of the tyre thing, because that's just confusing. Shellek has retired, uh, or has left the session as well. He will not be sticking around. No surprises there. No real reason for him to stick around in the lobby either. Oh, and Bolash Kevin runs deep into the final chicane. Will Kruzix be able to get the better run now through the final corner? He might well be able to do so. Oh, he just gets his front right on the curving there. That might have compromised his run up towards La Source. Surely he can't think about the dive bomb. He has to, though, because he breaks that much later than Bolash Kevin. I don't think he wanted to try a dive bomb there, but Bolash Kevin breaked earlier than Kruzix was expecting, and the German pretty much had to look up the inside of the Hungarian just to make sure he didn't crash into the back of the racing point. And Antonator will be looking at this potential battling up ahead, and he'll be pretty happy about it. He's got a much better run through Radion than his teammate. Here we go with Antonator now up the Kemmel straight. He's got the slipstream. Surely now he will be able to make the move on Kruzik. They've got very similar ERS battery deployment available to them. But Antonator up the inside. Can he break later? No, he cannot. Kruzik around the outside holds on to third position for now. Beaker's out of the race. What's happened to him? That's another Haas. It's the second Haas in the wall on the right-hand side at the top of Radion. Both Haases falling prey to the exact same corner. That is tragic for that team. That is, that is such a shame. They both had such good starts to the race and then both come undone at the very same corner of the track. Really not a good corner if you're a Haas fan. Meanwhile... Back up towards the front. Camille is starting to gap Bolash Kevin pretty significantly now. That's probably mainly because of the mistake we saw Bolash Kevin making at the end of the previous lap. And the fact that he's having to deal with uh, driving in his mirrors a little bit with Kruzik so close behind him at the moment. JSR dropping further away from these guys, but he'll be pretty happy with being up in fifth position at the moment, I would imagine. Richie B in sixth in the Toro Rosso. Not really close to the back of JSR, but he's got a comfortable gap behind him to Blue 24 as well in the Renault. Ripson starting to close down Blue 24, but not maybe as fast as you might expect from someone who's gained 12 positions so far in this race after not qualifying and starting from the back of the grid. Bolash Kevin with a three-second time penalty. That'll be for running wide through Blanchimont. Not good news for the Hungarian driver, and that's even worse news for Bolash Kevin. He's run off there. He's run off completely, and he's just stopped. He's just stopped entirely. Uh, that looks like he's going to retire from the session to me. Greju's had to retire from the session. That's probably a different DNF altogether. Let's try and see what's happened to Greju. We'll stick on board with Jezza right now, see if we can pick up where the Tara Rosso driver ahead of him has gone off. There was a bit of a gap between these two drivers, so it's going to take a while. But Bolash Kevin, our championship leader, is out of this race. Uh, he just locked up once again into the final chicane, and after doing the same mistake two laps in a row, seems to have just quit out of frustration there. 
perhaps not the strongest mental state for the Hungarian driver at the moment, and he's he'll be pretty disappointed with how this race has gone, but he has a comfortable margin in the championship at the moment. Not going to try and stay, see where Greju has gone off because the Williams have switched positions, and Donator is up ahead of Kruzix now. So both of them have gained a position on the previous lap thanks to Bolash Kevin retiring from the session, and now Andonator has gained two as he's up in the second position, demoting his fellow German teammate down into third. Greju out of the session, Bolash Kevin out of the session. The attrition rate is high here in Belgium, as you might expect from a full wet condition race at one of the toughest tracks of the calendar at the best of times. Five drivers out of the race so far. And this is what I was talking about when I said the likes of Jezza, Wazza and Schultes, uh, or maybe not Schultes, Jezza and Wazza, can still think about circulating even though they've had poor starts to this race because you never know how many cars are going to retire from this race. Sissant and Hooper are the next drivers to be closed up behind Nuts to Nuts. Nuts to Nuts has been pretty much uh, having a train of cars behind him. Oh, wow! Sissant taking curb on the inside. That's not what you want to do in the Alfa Romeo there. And it is the McLaren of Hooper who moves up the inside, takes that position away without any problems whatsoever into Puan. That's a good point in chat there. It may well be a wheel problem that Bolash Kevin was experiencing. His pace wasn't too far off, but two mistakes into the same portion of the track maybe indicates that he uh, was having a problem with his rig setup, and that might be why he's elected just simply to retire from the session rather than trying to keep going with that problem. I don't know if that's the truth or not. It may just be that he was just so frustrated with himself and so far off track that he decided he would rather just retire from the session than persevere, but we'll have to see. Sissant close behind Hooper, who is also close behind Nuts to Nuts. This is where most of the battling is going to be going on. I'm going to quickly jump on board with the Williamses as they head up through Radion. Andonator comfortably ahead of Kruzix at the moment, and with no DRS in these wet conditions, it looks like Andonator will be able to hold on to that position for the moment. Schultes is heading to the pits in the Red Bull. He, ooh, just about got that slowed down. Let's take a look and see what Schultes is going to do here. Is he going to set on another set of... Oh, is that soft tyres? That can't be right. They're going to have turned into wets. Okay, so that is his second set of wet tyres in this race. Let me just check the race director to confirm that. Wet tyres. Yep, yeah, he's been on wet tyres for the whole race so far. So he's strapped on another set of wet tyres in that Red Bull. And uh, that shows that the wet conditions are going to persevere for a while here. They're going to persist, and Hooper has taken the position away from Nutz to Nutz. Good move from the McLaren driver through Lecom. He'll have to defend it here into Bruxelles, though, and Nutz to Nutz will try and go the long way around the outside, but you're going to pick up so much understeer on the wet condition here. It's off of the dry line as well around the outside of Bruxelles, and Hooper has a relatively easy time holding that position, but makes a meal of it into no name now. Has he thrown it all away? No, he has not. Just about gets the power down quick enough to make sure the Nuts to Nuts has to tuck in behind him for Puon, bumping the back of the McLaren driver, unsettling the car a little bit. Hooper has to hold on to it. He'll not be happy about that little bit of contact he just felt from his rear end from the, uh, the Ferrari driver behind. But it looks finally as though Hooper has finally laid claim to that position and kept Nuts to Nuts behind him for now. Sissant with a watching brief of this battle up ahead. Kruzix actually dropping away from Andonator now, so it seems like Andonator really has the pace here in the wet conditions. Look at that, fastest lap of the race from Andonator on his wet tyres in his Williams. A two-minute flat, that's the first driver to go into the two minutes at all, I think. Everyone else has been on a two-minute one, and he's comfortably into the two-minute flats. Or not two-minute flat, no. Uh, 2 minute point six, So he's comfortably into the 2 minute zone rather than the 2 minute point one zone. So that shows that he really has a lot of pace on some of the other drivers around here. Nuts to Nuts crawling all over the back of Hooper. This battle for 8th position is not over yet, but now Nuts to Nuts with a real tank slapper on the exit of the final corner and halfway down the start finish straight there. But actually, it seems like Sissant had some problems of his own because he wasn't in a position to capitalise. All it meant is that Hooper was safe from the Ferrari driver behind. Andinator behind Camille at the moment. Indeed, Greju in chat. Uh, oh, Sissons retired from the session. Sorry, I'll go back to that in a moment. There he is. It's once again another Ferrari-powered car. Three Ferrari-powered cars so far in this race have binned it on the exact same portion of the track. They have hit the wall on the right-hand side at the top of Radion. In these wet conditions, that's something that's so easy to do. Eau Rouge and Radion become such a difficult section of this track. When it's wet, even in intermediate conditions, it's really tough. It's almost flat out here. It is flat out now in the dry. 
But in the wet, it becomes the challenge it once was here at Spa-Francorchamps. And some of these drivers are failing to rise to the challenge. Schellek, Beaker, and now Sissant have all fallen prey to that corner. Iceman close behind Shad at the moment. Jezza and Schultes battling it out towards the bottom of the field. And Jezza's actually taking the position away from Schultes, despite the fact that Schultes has come into the pits much more recently and has the fresher wet tyres on his car. So that's interesting that Jezza was able to make a move on the Red Bull driver despite that fact. None of the rest of the drivers feeling the need to come into the pits to uh, strap on another set of wet tyres just yet. I guess they're just trying to hold on and see if it gets to intermediate conditions in time for them to change their tyres. The lap times are starting to tumble now and oh no! Hooper! I just cut away at the wrong moment there. Hooper into the wall on the exit of Kerpel. Frauen! No! Shad does the exact same thing but he doesn't go into the wall. Critically for the racing point driver he keeps it out of the wall. Hooper was not able to do so in the McLaren but Shad holds on to it and he just he must have been distracted. Took his eye off the ball as he saw Hooper on the right hand side there and almost fell to the exact same fate as the McLaren driver, but held it really, well, uh, more luck than judgment, I think, there from the Frenchman, but he'll be happy with it nevertheless. He won't care whether it was luck or judgment. He'll just be happy. He didn't end up in the wall like the hoop, like Hooper did ahead of him. Up into the points as well after having that jump start on the opening lap. Shad will be pretty happy with how his race has gone since that point, although he has actually dove into the pits now, so he is going to be changing for another set of full wet tyres, I can only imagine. Kruzik's dropping away from Andonator a little bit, but Andonator's dropping away from Camille now. Looks like Camille has that pace that I was saying only Andonator had earlier on. It seems like the track is just getting a bit faster here. Andonator running wide on the exit of No Name. Shad does indeed put on another set of wet tyres, but he drops all the way to the very back of the field in doing so. No drivers particularly close to each other on track at the moment, apart from Jezza and Schultes. We saw the Renault taking the position away from the Red Bull on the previous lap. Will Schultes be able to right that wrong here as he heads up towards Lecom at the top of the Kemmel straight? He's closing in on the Renault driver, but will it be fast enough? Overtake mode drops down to zero ERS, zero ERS mode. He's not going to make the move on this particular lap, or at least not into that particular corner. And look at the rain. It's getting worse, if anything. And Jezza with a bit of a tank slapper through the middle of Lecom here, but he just covers off the line nicely, and nothing Schultes can do to try and put himself ahead of the Renault driver. The other Renault of blue now has Ripson for company. Ripson has closed down about a four or five second gap that was initially between these guys once Ripson was able to get past Nuts to Nuts behind. And now he has closed all the way back up to blue with uh, 10 laps to go in this race, or 11 laps to go in this race, I should say. He's got plenty of time to try and find a way past the Renault driver up ahead. Let's just stick on board with him now, see if he's able to get a better run through the final couple of corners. He is, and Blue actually just dives straight into the pits in the Renault, not wanting to waste any time battling with Ripson as he saw the McLaren driver approaching him quick as lightning in his mirrors. Lap time still start, still coming down here. I think we saw Camille setting another fastest lap last time out. Indeed, a two minute point two. So they are coming down. We're probably getting closer to intermediate conditions, but some of these drivers are having to admit defeat and simply go on to the wet tires. It's just not ready for intermediate tires at this point in the race. And these guys are all having to admit defeat, go on to those wet tires and hope that the rain doesn't abate anytime soon. Take a look at everyone who's stopped here. Blue is the leading car of those who have stopped. Wazza and Iceman look like they've come out side by side on the exit of the pits there. There they are, and it's the Mercedes that gets the advantage. Iceman running a little bit wide on the exit of the pit lane there. If this was F1 Esports, he'd have picked up a penalty for that one. But less said about that, the better. So, Schultes still close behind Jezza. Will he make a move on this lap? The Red Bull driver not battling over any points at the moment, but as we've seen... There have been so many DNFs from this race, so many crashes, so many incidents in the wet conditions. And will we see another one here as we see two cars going side by side up the Camel Straight, up towards Lecom now? Who will be braver on the brakes? It's Schultes who breaks later, but no, he breaks harder and they make contact there as Jezza just seemed to run into Schultes. Schultes didn't really turn into Jezza there from what I could see. It seemed like Jezza just didn't really turn the wheel into the corner, but Schultes is letting him back through, so evidently Schultes disagrees with what I said there. Uh, no, he wasn't letting him back through. He just had a tank slapper on the exit. And they're still battling here through Bruxelles. I thought he was going so slowly that he was just letting him through. Race leader Camille Common has come into the pits now. Schultes looks like he's got the upper hand on Jezza. Don't know whose fault that little incident between them was, but it didn't end up in too much damage or any damage for either of the cars. Just the resulted in a loss of position for the Renault driver. Where will Camille 
file back out into this race. He's behind Andonator, Kruzik, and JSR. Ripson's headed into the pits, so he doesn't have to worry about the McLaren driver. There is JSR ahead of him, and he will be comfortably ahead of Richie B. The sister car, the Toro Rosso, not able to challenge Camille even after Camille has come in to make a pit stop. Make a pit stop. So, Ripson into the pits. He was very close behind Blue before heading into the pits. Where will he be relative to the Renault once he's come out of the pits? Let's stick on board with Blue and see if we see that McLaren on our right-hand side heading out of the pits. There he is, and it's not going to be enough for Ripson. He's going to be still behind Blue. The overcut has not paid off for the McLaren driver, but he will be thinking that he has the pace on this Renault driver, and he will be hoping that he can get past him as soon as he possibly can. Back onto the tyres, everyone still on those wet condition tyres, full wet tyres. No one elected to go brave and to go onto the intermediates. It would just be a crazy decision rather than brave at this point in the race, I do believe. We saw last time in Hungary how Andonator and Richie B were able to nurse their tyres so well in wet conditions, and I don't believe it's any coincidence that those are two of the four drivers who have elected not to come into the pits so far. Interestingly, both of the Williams out there in positions one and two at the moment, neither of them have come into the pits yet, so when one of them does, one of them's going to have to go another lap even than this one. They can't both come into the pits at the end of this lap, otherwise they'll have to double stack, and I'm sure neither of them want to do that. Will Kruzix head into the pits now to make sure that he doesn't have to double stack at any point? Or will Andonator just head into the pits and make the decision easier for his uh, compatriot behind him? Let's see, Andonator stays out. Kruzix stays out, both of them backing their ability to hold on to these tyres. Camille and JSR battling into the final chicane here and it's the Red Bull who takes the position away on much fresher wet tyres there. Camille Common has moved himself up back into third and he will be looking to get the best result he possibly can in this race now that Bolash Kevin has retired from the session and there are many points up to up for grabs and with so few drivers uh, or so few points for the drivers so far in the championship, Bolash Kevin I may remind you is only sitting on 68 points in the championship. This sort of result, if Camille Come On can take the win in this race, this sort of result will be an absolute windfall of points for him relative to the zero points that Bolash Kevin will be able to pick up and he will close so much of the gap to the Hungarian driver at the top of the standings. He won't move into second in the standings, particularly if Andonator continues doing as well as he has done so far in this race. He's currently sitting in second in the championship and Kruzix in fourth. But all of these drivers will be stealing a march on Volash Kevin here after he retired from the session due to one reason or another. Unclear what exactly happened to the Hungarian in the racing point, but either way, he is no longer in the race and that's what matters. Ripson close behind Blue, but not close enough to make a move on this lap. He'll be frustrated with this. A 21 second gap between Blue and Richie B up ahead, but Richie B and JSR both yet to come into the pits. So, fourth position for these guys, these guys uh, Blue and Ripson, they'll be thinking that fourth position is still possible for them. Maybe able to catch up to JSR before the, before the end of the race once JSR and Richie B have headed into the pits. Unlikely that they can challenge for a podium unless Kruzix, oh, Kruzix, Speaking of the devil, picks up a three-second time penalty for running wide on the exit of Stavolo. A little bit harsh there, but nevertheless, it would have only been a little warning, but that's just his third warning in a row, and that's why he's picked up a time penalty. But yeah, these guys at the front, unless they throw it off the road or have any major incident, this is your podium for today. Camille Common, Kruzix, and Andonator. What order they will be in is anyone's guess as the Williams stay out once again. Look at these guys. Staying out, staying out, and staying out. They're really backing their ability to nurse the tires to, to nurse the tires to hold on to it. And are they thinking the intermediate conditions will come? It doesn't look like it to me, although Camille setting a 159 flat on those wet tyres, showing that the track is starting to speed up significantly now, so maybe intermediate tyres aren't that far away after all. Or are they just thinking that they're going to run these wet tyres from the start of the race until the end? The mandatory pit stop doesn't apply in the wet conditions. You can do a zero stop if you want to, and Blue picks up a 10 second time penalty and rips and wow, holds on to it just about. Almost went spinning through the final corner. Blue took a lot of curving on the, on the uh, right hander in the final chicane there, and that picked himself up a 10 second time penalty. That's where the other drivers have been picking up 10 second time penalties in this race as well. Expect to see those ones appealed in the stewards after the race but I will have to treat them as though they are going to stay when we see the results of this race, but we'll have a bit of a caveat and rips and with a real high speed wobble there through Rouge and Radion. He's struggling in that McLaren on this lap at the moment. Just needs to settle down, cool his tyres down a little bit. Jezza heading into the pits. 
for the second time in this race. He'll set on another set of wet tyres by the look of things. Yep, no intermediates for the Renault driver. He'll come out back in 13th and last position in this race at the moment. Schultes down in 11th with a three second time penalty to his name as well. No one particularly close to each other on track at the moment. I'm going to check the front runners to see who has penalties and who doesn't. Two warnings for Anzinator. One penalty for Cruzix. Zero warnings at all for Camille. One warning for JSR. One penalty for Richie B. That's his 10 second time penalty. A 10 second time penalty for Blue24 as well. And no penalties for Ripson. Not going to check the rest of the field because I don't want to keep you away from the action for too long. But that means that it's pretty much a straight fight. Apart from the fact that Cruzix has that 3 second time penalty. And Richie B and Blue both have those 10 second time penalties. But those may well be got rid of in the stewards after the race. Cruzix dropping away a bit from Anzanata. Neither of them have come into the pits at the end of this lap either. Are they going to stay out the whole race on these wet tyres? A zero-stop strategy from Anzanata, Cruzix, JSR and Richie V seems to be the order of the day for these drivers. Will it pay off? Camille is closing them down. He's setting much faster lap times at the moment. What was his lap time last time out? It was a 1.59.2. Cruzix, a one uh, a two minute and one second and a two and a half... A two, minute and half a second for Andinator as well. They are losing time to Camille, pretty significant amount of time, uh, amounts of time. Ripson picks up a 10 second time penalty as well down in seventh. So Richie V, Blue and Ripson all have 10 second time penalties. And what that might mean is that actually those time penalties don't make a difference to those guys at the end of the race because they're all going to drop that back 10 positions from where they were. And Nutz to Nutz is beyond 10 seconds behind Ripson as well. Schultes with a 10 second time penalty as well, dives into the pits. Is he going to retire that car or has he picked up some damage? In the Red Bull, what will the Polish driver do as he heads into the pits? Ooh, into the pits he goes. Wet tires still, full wets. I suspect he's just going to retire from the session there in the Red Bull. We'll have to wait and see though. Kruzik dropping away from Andonator. He's losing time to his teammate up ahead. But if Kruzik can just hold up Camille once Camille catches up to him. At this rate, Camille will catch up to the Williams guys with a couple of laps left to go. But it's all about whether or not they can defend the position at that point. Whether their entirely too old wet tyres will be enough just to be able to break late enough and to keep the Red Bull behind the pole charging up behind them. Schultz has not retired from the session. So we just get... Oh, no, there we go. He has retired from the session. Just waited until he was out of the pits to do so. Hopefully that doesn't bring out a virtual safety car either. Oh, God forbid, an actual safety car. Very rare that we see one of those, though, in this game. Ripson really close behind Blue at the moment, and this has become a battle for position once again because they both have 10-second time penalties to their names. So Ripson now needs to make the move on Blue if he's going to hope to get past him and to finish ahead of him in the standings. The race standings, I should say, not the driver's standings. Uh, Ripson is, I believe, ahead of Blue at the moment in the driver's standings. I'm not sure if Blue's picked up any points so far this season. Now I come to mention it. Didn't make it last time out in Hungary, I don't believe. He wasn't in that race. I can't remember where he finished the time before in the German Grand Prix, I'm afraid. But I have a feeling he has not got any points to his name so far this season. Kruzix really dropping away now, losing pace. Schultes leaves the session. That's fair enough, he has already DNF'd from it down in 13th, and thankfully he did not bring out a virtual safety car or anything of that ilk. Camille, come on, let's drive on board with him for a little bit. See him closing down the cars ahead of him. Can he see him on the exit? Yeah, you can see the Williams ahead going into No Name, and every time he catches a glimpse of that Williams, he'll see it getting closer and closer to the back of that car up ahead, and he will be licking his lips thinking about how much that Williams is probably going to be easy meat when he gets there because of the difference in age between his wet tyres and Kruzix's wet tyres up ahead of him. But even if Kruzix can't hold Camille behind him for the whole race, he can think about holding him behind for a couple of laps just long enough to give Andonator enough time to build enough of a gap that he won't have to deal with the Red Bull driver before the end of this race comes. We'll have to wait and see. And also... I'm kind of on tenterhooks here because Cruzix, Andonator, JSR and Richie B, let's not uh, rule out the possibility of a puncture for those guys. They have been on those wet tyres since the start of the race, the very start of the race. They are 17 lap old wet tyres, 17 very long laps here, the longest lap on the calendar here in, uh, in uh, Belgium. About to say Singapore, that's the other really long lap, but no, it is Belgium that we are in, as you might be able to tell, by the fact that there's not a street circuit and there's forests surrounding us. But Camille getting closer and closer to Kruzix up ahead. Quickly, let's take a look at Ripson and Blue. 
Still close between these girls, guys, only half a second separating the two drivers. Ripson getting closer, but not close enough to think about making a move at this point. They have no difference, or one lap difference, I should say, in the age of their tyres, so Ripson does not have the sort of advantage that Camille can expect when he closes up to the back of the Williams up ahead of him. So it looks like Ripson's just going to have to rely on raw talent to try and get past Blue. Blue with a major moment on the exit of the final corner, but Ripson follows him in doing that. Both having really big kicks of oversteer in the traction zone, but of course it's so tough in the wet conditions to avoid that. Through La Source now, and nothing doing for the McLaren driver, and it doesn't look like he's going to be particularly close behind the Renault through Eau Rouge and Radion. Let's see how Blue can handle Radion. Looks pretty good for me. Doesn't run too wide on the exit. Oh, he runs a bit wide. Naturally picked up a three-second time penalty. He's about to say he didn't run too wide on the exit. But actually, he ran just a little bit further over to the right-hand side than he wanted to. And that picked up his third warning in a row. And that gives him a three-second time penalty. So now, Ripson will definitely inherit that position away from Blue unless he picks up another time penalty of his own. Camille getting closer. Closer and closer to the Williams up ahead. Really closing him down now. Kruzik still dropping away from Andonator, although the gap has stabilised around three and a half seconds. Interesting that Andonator has been the faster of the two Williams drivers here today. Was very much not the case last time out in Hungary, and not the case in the qualifying session either, as Kruzik's got the better of Andonator in that one. But come the race and come the wet conditions, it is Andonator who has had the upper hand on his teammate. Camille, though, will he also have the upper hand on Andonator's teammate? going to be close behind him here up towards La Source. Will he think about making a move? You can see Andonator ahead of them. It's really not that far. Camille will be able to see the race leader in his visor there and he'll be really hoping that he can get past his teammate as quick as he possibly can and start to chase down Andonator with only three laps left to go in this race now. Four laps left to go in this race I should say. I can't count. Four laps left to go in this race. His time is running out for the Red Bull driver. And look how much quicker he is through Radion. Surely this is going to be a wave by here for Camille. There's nothing that Kruzic can do to defend this position, I don't think, from the Red Bull driver alongside him. Though Camille actually very low on deployable energy in the ERS. And they make contact. And no, that's Kruzic off the track and into the wall. No, I think he just understayed into Camille. Camille didn't give him much space on the inside of the first part of Lecon there. So maybe Kruzix will have the right to feel aggrieved about that. We'll have to see if that goes to the stewards after the race, but I wouldn't be surprised if it did. Not sure if we can apportion blame based on what we saw there though. And now JSR all of a sudden sees a podium staring him in the face. He stayed out on these wet tires that he's had since the start of the race as well. So is Richie B, but 7.2 second gap between himself and JSR means that he's not really in the hunt for the bronze medal in this race. But, Kruzix and JSR very much are, and JSR will be hoping to get past Kruzix. I'm not sure if Kruzix picked up wing damage. I'm sure he did. His front wing was buried in the wall, and it looks like JSR has so much more pace than the Williams up ahead of him. Thinks about making a move into turn 13. Doesn't do it, though. Gives Kruzix enough to think about, though. And look how much quicker he can go through turn 14 as well. Thinks about going all the way around the outside. He really does have the quicker car here. Kruzix has lost a significant amount of his front-end downforce, and that is why JSR is able to close up to him so quickly in each of these corners. But JSR just has to be patient and not do things like that as he almost loses the car under traction out of Kirkwall Frey. He just has to be patient and wait until it's an easy move for him past Kruzix. It will be an easy move before the end of this race, and there is no chance of JSR catching up Camille or Asher up ahead. So he doesn't really have to concern himself with getting past Kruzix as quick as he possibly can. He just has to make sure it happens before the very end of this race. Ripson still close behind Blue, but it's that magical half a second gap that's between them. But he just doesn't seem to be able to get any closer by. That barrier has been saving Blue 24 in this race. It's like a force field around the Renault here. Iceman picking himself up three second time penalty down in 10th position. But Shad isn't close enough behind him to think about taking that position away just yet. Ripson, though, once again struggling in traction, as all the drivers are really here. JSR faster than Kruzix up Radion, and he's going to be faster all the way up the Kennel straight here. Kruzix, will he go defensive? No, he will not. This is going to be a dive bomb from JSR. Brave move. He gets it slowed down really well. Kruzix 
doesn't squeeze him like the Red Bull did to him on the previous lap, Shad picking himself up a 10 second time penalty, one of many drivers to do that, and JSR is through, and up into third, so the Mercedes has taken the podium away from the Williams, it looked like it was going to be a Williams 1-2 for a while there, but now it's going to be a 1-4 and four at very best, and Cruzix will still be losing time to Richie B behind, so he's got to worry about that. Meanwhile, up at the front, Camille is so close now. The hind Andonator. Look at the gap. Less than half a second between Camille and the German in the Williams. He's already passed one German in the Williams. Can he do the same to the race leader here? He'll have to wait, probably, until he gets up to Eurouge and Radion. But we saw how much quicker he was able to go through Radion than Kruzix on uh, two laps ago now. And we'll see if he will have a similar effect on Andonator up ahead. Nice and tidy through the final corner. And look how much he's not really having to struggle so much with oversteer compared to some of the other drivers. He's really nursing those tires well. He's low uh, ERS percentage in the battery, although Andonator's not much higher, only about 3% difference between the two drivers there in their battery deployment available. Here we go now. Andonator weaving a little bit there before the corner. I don't know if that was oversteer or what, but look how much faster Camille has gone. Surely this will be the race lead for the Polish driver in the Red Bull. He will reclaim first position in this race like he had in the opening stages of the race. He came into the pit. Andonator did not. Will Andonator keep it alongside? No, he will not. It's Camille who takes the race lead away. And is it going to finally be the victory for Camille? It looked like it might be the victory last time out until he came into the pits and strapped on a set of dry tyres when he wanted intermediates. He binned it into the wall then in frustration. But here he will feel nothing but elation as he takes the race lead away from Andonator. And with only one and a half laps left to go, it looks like Camille, all he has to do is keep it on the island now. JSR in third position, 18 and a half seconds. That shows you how much of a different planet Camille and Andonator and until that incident between Camille and Kruzix. Kruzix was also on that same planet with those two cars compared to the rest of the field. They have had so much more pace. But really impressive stuff for them, I gotta say. Also, Ripson still, still just that close behind Blue, not able to get any closer still. That's gonna be so frustrating for the McLaren driver if he doesn't get past Blue. He really closed up to the back of him pretty quickly in the uh, middle part of the race once he got past Nuts to Nuts behind, but he just wasn't able to do anything with it after that point. Went for the overcut in the pit stop phase and wasn't able to make it work. Richie B, close behind Kruzix. If he gets rid of his 10 second time penalty that he picked up, this might be a battle for position. But as things stand, Richie B does have 10 seconds looming over his time. That will be added to his race time at the end of the race. So unless Kruzix has a major moment, it's not going to matter if Richie B gets past the Williams driver or not. Wazza with a three second time penalty in ninth, but the man behind him has a couple of three second time penalties, I believe, Iceman, or at least one three second time penalty to his name, so that's not going to affect Waza too badly. Just going to, oh, in fact, no, never mind. I was about to double check if Camille had a three second time penalty, but I don't believe he does. But even if he did, and I can't remember now, it won't matter because Andonator has already dropped from without three seconds behind Camille, the guy in the lead at the moment. Andonator just losing all that pace now on those wet tires. And you've got to say, real big hats off and Kruzix, has he bend it? He has! Where is this? This is on the exit of La Source. Kruzix, a five second time penalty with a severe collision with Richie B. Is Richie B okay? He seems like he's got some front wing damage, but other than that, I think his car's going to be okay. It looks like the Toro Rosso and the Williams have come together, and it's just gone from bad to worse for Kruzix. It looked like for a while he was on track to finish second in this race, but it's all gone wrong. And after such a good race to claim the victory last time out, look how much he is struggling in this Williams. It's almost like he has suspension damage that he's battling with, although that is, of course, not the case. Otherwise, the game would not be allowing him to continue. Ripson is having his last few chances to loom to try and get past Blue. Look, he can almost reach out and grab the Renault front wing up ahead of him, but he can't quite do it. And if he could, maybe he could draw himself alongside, but he can't. And it looks like Blue is going to be able to hang on to that, barring any major mistakes. Where is Camille? Here he is in the final sector of the final lap of the race. He's weaving on the exit of Blanchimont. That shows the confidence there 
for the Polish driver up towards the final corner. This is the final test for him. And he passes the test. A bit of a kick of oversteer, but that's just celebration. Look at him weaving across the line, and he takes the victory here in the Belgian Grand Prix. Camille Comon, the Polish driver in the Red Bull, wins. And Donator comes home in second after pulling off a zero-stop strategy. Admirable stuff from the German in the Williams to finish 16.7 seconds ahead of JSR, who is on the same strategy as him as well. Really good performance, you have to say, from both of these guys, but in particular from Andonator. JSR across the line, no problem. He will claim the final podium position. Kruzik dropping down the field there. He's got half a front wing, if that. And it looks like he might have even had another incident of his own. Richie B comes across the line in fourth. Blue in fifth, but Ripson takes the position away thanks to Blue's three-second time penalty. So we didn't need to get past the Renault driver in the end, and I'm sure that will be a major relief to the McLaren driver, as he would have otherwise been incredibly frustrated. They all have 10 second time penalties, but it doesn't matter because Nutz to Nutz is 20 and a half seconds behind them. Not had much pace in this race, has the Ferrari driver, but he uh, was able to keep a few cars bottled up behind him for quite a while in this race. Wazza crosses the line, and actually Nutz to Nutz seems to have had a 10 second time penalty as Wazza is able to get past him. Iceman also claims eighth position away from the Ferrari driver, and Shad comes home in 10th. And he also had a 10 second time penalty as well. So. He will be your final point scorer today. Kruzix in 11th. What a shame. What could have been for Kruzix here today? But it was not to be for the Williams driver. Real disappointment in that cockpit. I'm sure of it. As Jezza picks up his, I think, second 10-second time penalty of the race. The final 10-second time penalty of this race. That's been a bit of a tale of this race. But wet conditions throughout. And these drivers really made a show of it. A very high rate of attrition as we only had 12 finishers out of a field of 20. Oh, and it looks like my game has crashed. So, <laughs> at least it waited until the end of the race to crash. So, uh, that's good news at least. Just try and get out of the game now, as uh, if my computer lets me. Hold on. I'll move you. Hopefully that will have worked, and you should be looking at a little uh, slideshow of images here. But, um... Yeah, if I can actually ever get out of this race, that would be ideal. We'll have to wait and see. So, what a race it was, though. Real good battling from so many of the drivers. The fact that four drivers pulled off a zero-stop strategy, absolutely incredible. And it's no surprise to me that two of those drivers were two of the same drivers who pulled off the one-stop strategy last time out in Hungary as well. It didn't look like it was going to be possible then. I didn't think it was going to be possible today, but they proved me wrong both times, did Andonator and Richie B, and it's really paid off for them well. I think Andonator will have actually taken the lead in the Drivers' Championship thanks to Bolash Kevin not scoring any points. There we go. I've managed to get out of the game finally. So... That will be it from me. I have to rush off, I'm afraid. But thank you guys so much for joining me today for an absolutely soaking wet and very exciting race at Spa-Francorchamps for the Belgian Grand Prix. I have been Jacob Hancocks, and this has been the AOR Hype Energy F3 League. And thank you so, so much for joining me. Goodbye.